Okay, so this was question 11 from the homework. Let's just read through and think about what's happening here. It says the engine of a van of mass 400 kilograms cuts out when it is moving along a straight horizontal road with speed 16 meters per second. The van comes to rest without the brakes being applied. In a model of the situation, it is assumed that the van is subject to a resistive force which has a constant magnitude of 200 newtons. Okay, so um, if I was to draw a diagram of what this might look like, there is a resistant force of 200 newtons. Is there any force that's making it move to the right? Is there any force that's trying to make it keep driving? If this is the direction that it was moving in, it was starting off moving in this direction with a speed of 16. No, there's nothing. There would have been something usually. Usually what we would have here is what we would call a driving force. Okay, But there's no driving force here because what did it say in the question? The engine of the van cuts off. The engine of the van cuts off. So there's no um, engine of the van. There's no, uh, nothing trying to push it forward anymore. It's a bit like if you're cycling a bike and you stop pedaling, you're still going to keep going, but you're going to be slowing down because of the air resistance that's happening. Okay. So if it's asking for us to say how long it takes um, for the van to stop, well, all they've told us so far is that it has a speed of 16 and that it comes to rest. We don't really have enough information. So what's the piece of information that's the most useful to connect together diet force diagrams and the SUVAT formulae? Yeah, acceleration. So we obviously need to find out what the acceleration is for this one. Now, the mass of this is 400. Um, and what would the, if we think it's moving in this direction, which it is moving in this direction, what would the resultant force be if we were res resolving to the right? Minus 200. We've got nothing going to the right, so we've got minus 200 equals the mass times the acceleration. So we were resolving it to the right using F equals MA. So when you divide by 400, you get that the acceleration is minus 0 0.5. Why is the acceleration <coughs> negative? It's slowing down. It is slowing down, OK? That's why I put the acceleration going to the right, because I still know it's moving to the right, but that I expected a negative value because it was slowing down in that part, OK? Now I know that the acceleration is minus 0 0.5. I know that its initial speed was 16 and I want to know when it comes to rest, I want to know how long it takes. So I'm going to try and find out what t is. Notice how I've only written the four of them down there. What equation connects those four together? V equals u plus at. So we get 0 equals 16 minus 0 0.5t. So 0 0.5t is 16. So t is 32. That's for part a of the question. They've said that's only worth three marks. I don't think that's very fair. How far the van travels before it stops? So we still know that the acceleration is minus 0 0.5, that u is 16, and v is 0. But we want to know how far it travels. So this time we're going to try and find out what s is. Um, and I can see the thing that connects those together is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So 0 equals 16 squared plus 2 times minus 0 0.5 times s. So you get that s is equal to 16 squared, which is 196, is it? Is that right, 196? I should know my square numbers off the top of my head. 156. 256. I told you I didn't know what I was talking about. 256 meters. OK. The last part's interesting because we haven't really talked much about um, the modeling assumptions here. <coughs> Let's just go back through the question and see what does it mean by the modeling assumptions. So it says, in a model, this is the bit to look at, the situation, it is assumed that the van is subject to a resistive force which has a constant magnitude of 200. So the only thing that we've said in the model is that it has a uh, resistive force which has constant magnitude. If they're asking you to criticize the model, basically just say the opposite of what the model has said. So what could we say about the, the model that's not a very good thing that they've done? It may not be constant. Resistance to motion is not likely to be constant. Okay, So we should say here, comment on the suitability of the modeling assumption, the resistance 
or the resistance to motion is unlikely to be constant. You can have a quick think about that. When you're cycling a bike, what does the resistance to motion feel like when you're going really, really, really fast versus when you're just going really slowly? Which one feels like there's more of a resistance? When you're going fast. Yeah, the faster you are, the more you feel like that wind is pulling against you as you're trying to cycle. So it's the same idea. Actually, the best way that we would do, we would model resistance is proportional to speed. And in fact, it's even more complicated than that as you go deeper into engineering and physics. But for now, we've said it's constant. That's not very realistic. So that's the part of the model that we would change. Okay? Right. 